Welcome everyone to another exciting episode of uh, The Tea with Fazen. So Lo, and today we want to respond to questions. You guys have been listening and we've got, you've gotten overwhelming uh, comments and questions. We put them together here and we shall be going through each one of them. So your voice is important. So let's get down with it. Awesome. What would you advise a 22-year-old entrepreneur with an effective uh, vision? Effective vision. Yet the vision doesn't align with the provision. That's an awesome question, actually. After you, sir. <laughs> <laughs> Whoever that is, they, they should consider poetry as one of their uh -huh. <laughs> habits. <laughs> what if my vision doesn't allow, align <coughs> with my provisions? Yeah. I'm assuming that here provisions are lagging behind the vision. Um, I also note that this person is 22 years old. What is the biggest asset that a 22-year-old has? <coughs> uh, what do they have? What can they bring to the table? Money is definitely not one of them. Yeah. I had uh, this guy of Alibaba, he's called Jack Ma. Jack Ma, yeah. yeah. Jack Ma was saying, when you're between 20 and 30 years, you should work for a small company with a great CEO where you will learn the ropes of running a business. Yeah? And that sort of touches this 22-year-old. So this 22-year-old, what, really, what they really need is experience. That's one. But what they really can bring to the table is their papers and their hunger. Yeah. So, because it is about starting point. Vision is some is not something you achieve in one year. Vision is something that you achieve in a couple of years. You get. Eh? He is carrying a vision. I'm carrying a vision. But I can tell you, it will not be happening on Monday. Yeah. So, what do you have? Today, it's your papers. Your papers open the door, and you find yourself, you're working in a, in, a, in a place like Grand Acres. And let me tell you, when you're in your 20s, show up at work and make sure you are noticeable. I remember, I remember the days that changed my, my life and my career during, those, during my 20s are the days I spent in the office from uh, sunrise to sunset and sunrise again. Anybody who's ever had that kind of experience? Mm -hmm. You're there in the morning, darkness comes, you continue working you until you see sun again. You forgot to eat. Yeah, yeah. eating is a problem. And you go home, you shower, you come back, you do it again, and you don't complain to anyone. You don't tell anyone, you know, I was here until I don't know what time. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. My first boss used to say, you cannot say you're stressed if you do not work until midnight. So a 22-year-old, this is the time to show what your potential. You see, it's not experience, your potential. I am hungry, I can show up, and I will do everything to make sure that I make my contribution. Yep. When you meet that kind of a person, when Solo and I meet that kind of a person, we cannot forget such a kind of a person. We open doors for that kind of a person. We clear the way for that kind of a person. There, there are no protocols for promoting that kind of a person. There is one year I was promoted in February and in December. And I went to my bosses 
office and I asked him, I think there was a mistake. You must have forgotten that you promoted me <laughs> in February. And they told me, no, it's not a mistake. You have earned it. And I was like, wow. If you find this, uh, this is something else that I, I like saying. If you find that you have to go to your boss's office and, and plead for a salary increase, it means something is wrong. Because you're not getting noticed. But anybody who shows up at work and gives their all, especially that age, I am telling you, you can get three promotions in a year. You, there, there is no limit. Eh? You will just be accelerated. You just be accelerated. So what does that do? You start answering the question of provision. Because that's what this person is missing. But mm. So show your hunger. The people who have, have the resources will get to notice you. They will start uh, increasing your own resources. They'll be there, that giant, you stand on their shoulder, and you will leapfrog. In, on their shoulders, you'll also learn how to run a business. It's very easy when you're 22 years old to think that you have figured it out, how to run a successful business. I'll tell you, there, there are enough lessons ahead. So spare yourself a lot of uh, tuition fees, because there is some expensive tuition fees. Work under a great boss like a solo. See what does he do in marketing? What does he do in operation? What does he do in the things I am not involved? Run, when, when, uh, when there is an event like this and you are the accountant, don't stay at home. Come, show up. How are those cameras rolling? How, are this, how, how, how does this business run? Mm. You know? At the end of the day, there will be no one to compete with you absolutely no one to compete with you. There's a common story that goes around about our, our group CEO, James Moria. When he was given his first assignment as an intern, it was in the, in the filing room. He was sent to the filing room, a graduate with CPA. And uh, I think uh, there was an, there are some, some other professional qualification. And the best place he could be sent was where? filing room. And he asked himself, what's the opportunity of being in the filing room? And he realized this is where all the information about the company is. So he was not just filing. He was reading. And as he was reading, he was learning. And they sat around a table. And the CEO then used to ask people questions about the business. And then he started answering all the questions. And nobody else could answer. And guess what? The CEO noticed a gem. Of course, he got him out of the, out of the filing room <laughs> immediately. <coughs> and that was 2001. That's when he had joined. By 2008, he was appointed the, f the youngest CEO of a listed company. Those were how many years later? Seven. Only seven years, man. Seven that's, years. That's amazing. He had risen from an intern to the CEO of a listed company. Just because he showed up. He was in his, he was in his 20s, just the same way as this gentleman is. So your vision, your vision will align with your provision when your efforts are aligned with your vision. Thank you. I don't think I can add anything to that, dude. That's, uh, that's, that's well said. I mean, that's, that's an amazing story. Uh, speaking of Mr. James Moria, he was a year ahead of me in high school. We both went to the school. <laughs> uh, this school? This school, yes. The others, I don't know what they are. But, uh, <laughs> I can hear a hater over there. It's like, he, he also used to be in the school, then he left. Oh. He went to another ramshackle place, <laughs> contraption of a school somewhere. <laughs> uh, but you know, speaking of of of, of that, th there's a process, guys. You you said it in the beginning. You're 22 years old. Give yourself a break. You have 
by today's standards, at least 65, maybe 70 years of life ahead of you. You have time. Your biggest premium, your biggest value uh, to offer anyone or anything right now is time, even to yourself. So give yourself a break, uh, but stay focused on the vision. There's a process, and trust the process as long as you're in it 100%. Uh, I don't remember James Moria uh, in high school. I remember the name. <laughs> I couldn't tell you what he looked like. <laughs> I just knew he was in a, in a house next door to mine, and he was one year ahead. Yeah. Uh, and I, I should point out his class was full of uh, illustrious personalities in the <laughs> corporate world today. I mean, um, I, it's nuts. Uh, Dahlberg, uh, James Mwangi, Edwin Masharia, those are all James Moria's uh, Classmate. classmates. But who knew there was that vision inside that young man back then? We all discounted him. Mm. Uh, he was a commoner like me. Mm. Uh, and, and look at him today. I mean, so if that doesn't encourage you to trust the process and give your all, be attentive, be hungry, show up. Uh, uh, I mean, honestly, and that's a local example. It's not in a Hollywood movie somewhere that we're quoting. That's flesh and blood today. If, if you're able to cultivate a relationship with Pius, uh, you know, you're one person removed from Mr. Moria, literally. Uh, so trust the process is, is, is the point. And just to stress the, one, the last one you said, provision. You know, someone told me, because I had the same question in, in my heart, in my mind, when I was struggling, because I had this big vision for my life. I mean, I'd been meditating on so much positivity just like you man it's interesting how everyone i've had this conversation with that has advanced in any form in their life goes through this process where you hibernate no one knows you no one sees you you're a nobody but the stuff you're doing in in secret in obscurity is what's creating your future so for me it was uh, i was sleeping on my girlfriend's couch i couldn't even contribute to the grocery bill <laughs> I, I used to, uh, when she was off at work, I would wash the dishes, I would vacuum the carpet, make sure the house was clean. That was a difficult thing for me to do. What do you want? But I had to add value. Yeah. I, I had to earn my keep. You needed to show up. <laughs> I, I needed to. I, I mean, it helped. It was my girlfriend. I, lo I loved her. I liked her. She's my wife today, by the way. Mm. Um, so th there was no sense of... Uh, indignity about it, but it was tough on my ego. But when I was not in the house, what I would do, I would go to the, there was a, a chain of uh, bookstores called Books A Million mm -hmm. uh, in the US, and I had zero money, so she would drive me there, drop me off for like an hour or two, and pick me up. What I would do for that hour or two, um, I used to have you know anywhere from three to five bucks when I went, uh, I, they used to have a magazine section, and I would pick all the Forbes magazines, the Millionaire magazines, because I wanted to, to learn something about the mindset of successful people. Mm -hmm. And I would kill an hour or two just reading, because I couldn't even afford to buy the magazine. Magazines were selling for like $12 or something like that. Uh, so my $5 were for my Starbucks coffee, uh, while I read the magazine for an hour or two, when I finished reading, I'd put the magazine back nicely because I couldn't afford to buy it, and she would pick me. Um, and that process uh, was important for my ability to grow the vision. Mm -hmm. I started to see the possibilities of my life, regardless of my circumstances. Mm -hmm. At some point, that vision got so big, I started to ask the same question. Man, God. I need provision for this vision, man. It's like, I even asked someone, uh, uh, my pastor, like, what do you do? That's why I was laughing when I read that question. What do you do when the vision inside you is, is larger than your, uh, your resources? And he didn't have an answer for me. So I held on. But later on, someone said, I don't even remember who it was, but God bless them for saying it in my, in my hearing. And they said, the reason you're not seeing the provision is because the provision is for the vision. 
That's why it's called pro vision. Mm -hmm. For the vision. For the vision. So if you're not seeing what is for the vision, then you're not committed to the vision. Mm -hmm. You're not spending your efforts pursuing the vision. Mm -hmm. That's all you need to do. In the case of the person who is struggling between employment and, and the business idea, you need to figure out which one of those is your vision mm -hmm. so that what is for that vision, the provision, mm -hmm. can unlock. Because that's how it works, guys. Focus on the vision, expand yourself towards it in whatever small way you can. There's, nothing, there's never a time you can say, I can't do anything towards the vision. There's something you can do, guys. And it, it covers all of life. And I, I don't mean to sound new agey about this because I don't believe in new ageism. I, I am a Christian, a believing Christian, a practicing Christian. At least I'm trying to, to be one. I'm not perfect, but I am on this journey. Uh, and I have proven this myself. Mm. You, have to, you have to act in faith. Take a step. Mm. Whatever it is, no matter how big your vision. Mm. Do Identify what you can do today, what you can do tomorrow, incrementally. Be consistent. Be disciplined about it. You will end up there. So, uh, what, what example can I give you? For me, let me pick something a bit more vain. Just to, just to, just to illustrate the point I'm making. Again, sleeping on my girlfriend's couch, uh, I would ride in her car when she was going shopping on weekends, and we would pass this uh, Land Rover dealership <laughs> on the highway, and I would see the cars nicely, you know, showcased in a nice showroom. I mean, it was stunning. One day I convinced her to drive in so I could go and look at these things. Uh, yes, I wanted vision. to touch, man. I was like, I can't <laughs> be seeing, you know, virtually <laughs> by Wi-Fi. I want to go touch, smell the leather. Yeah. Uh, you feel how the steering wheel, you know, is circular, you know. Danganya yeah. myself, I'm, sh I'm shifting the gears <laughs> in the showroom. And she accommodated me, so I did. And uh, I think for on the third visit, I, I, you know, I was like, I'm going to own this car one day. No, it doesn't look like it now. I think she even laughed at me. I know it doesn't look like, uh, like it now, but one day I'm going to own this thing. And what did I do? I, I asked the dealership for the cheapest thing I could buy that was part of that Land Rover. Yeah. And what was that? The key, mm -hmm. the key ring, the branded key ring. Yes. <laughs> 42 bucks that thing cost me, man. <laughs> I was so proud. I bought that sucker and I was like, this is the first piece of my future Land Rover. <laughs> I, I drive one today. I mean, uh, these, these, are, these are real things. So you have to, you have to get rid of the excuses. There's, there's never, uh, never despise small beginnings. Yep. It doesn't matter how long it takes. Like just have your goals, define it, be able to articulate it to yourself clearly. That should be your first assignment. Um, I wish my kids were old enough to tell them this, because this stuff gets my blood boiling. Uh, and I hope you guys will take it seriously. Define your goals clearly. Write them down. Uh, after you do that, prioritize them. Which one needs to happen before the other? Because you can't tackle everything at the same time. So you have to spend some time thinking. You have to make use of that brain and have critical thinking. After you prioritize them, you need to define what steps you have to take to achieve it within what period of time. Once you've done that, do the next fastest, smallest thing you can do towards it. It doesn't matter how insignificant, even if it's designing the logo for your future company mm -hmm. and printing it. Go to the cyber, print that thing on a piece of paper, frame it. I don't care what it is. Like, you know what it is that's going to get your, your insides excited and be consistent and 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 that's how the world around us was built from scratch so that's my advice the 22 year old whose vision is bigger than your provision mm. uh, focus on acting towards your vision and i suspect that if i asked you uh, directly you will not be able to articulate that vision to me properly because yeah. you haven't taken the time to define it mm -hmm. and if you have keep refining and prioritize mm -hmm. 
and do your task list and take, take the next step. I think your presence here today is, is an important part of that, maybe. Maybe you came because you needed to hear that and I, I wish you all success, genuinely. All right, thank you so much for tuning in. Those of you who are watching virtually, we really appreciate you taking time to listen in with the audience here. We are so grateful for the opportunity to share our experiences. Hopefully it adds value to your lives. We hope you'll continue to stay tuned. We'll have more episodes coming up. If you have any questions, please send them through. Make comments, make sure you like the videos and subscribe and share them only with people that you like, please. We we'll look forward to seeing you next time. I am Solomon. And I'm Pius Mushiri, and this is the tea. <laughs>